In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the web challenges from the LACTF 2024. I'm going to try and keep the video a bit shorter than usual, so let's see how that goes. The first challenge is called Terms, Conditions, and the description says, Welcome to LACTF. All you have to do is accept the terms, conditions, and you get a flag. Okay, so we load this page and we've got a terms conditions button, but we're not able to click it. Every time we move the mouse, it just moves further away. So we probably want to open up the dev tools with F12, but we'll get this message saying no console allowed. And we can go to the debugger and find out why that is. There is a message at the bottom or a bit of code at the bottom, which is going to check the window height, which means we can't even zoom in or out without that message appearing. But luckily, if we refresh the page, it will fix that. So we've still got the console open but we don't have that message. And that means we can also inspect this button and we'll see the reason it's moving. We've got the translate, which is occurring this transform, translate. So the first thing I did was try to remove this and see if it would stay in place, but it just adds it again. And if we go back to the debugger, we'll see the reason is because there is this accept.transform.style is being set here as well. So Probably quite a lot of ways you can solve this. What I did was just find out what the button is called. So we can grab the button with this get element by ID selector. And you can see that retrieves it. And we can basically just click it from there. We'll just do dot click at the end. And that will reveal the flag. Another way we could solve this would be to actually modify the script. And you can actually do that with Burp Suite. If you intercept the server response, let me turn on server response and that should do actually, we'll just do that. And then we'll clear the history so it doesn't have a cached version of the JavaScript file. We'll reload the page. Oh no, okay, I forgot to turn the intercept on. So let's clear the history again. And then we'll turn on our intercepts and then we'll refresh the page. And we have the get request and now we should have the response. Here's the server response. And you could just go and modify this. So we could take out the bit about the window height and the console. But we could also take out the style transform as well and then just forward it. And now the button doesn't move and we can just accept it. The next challenge is called Flaglang and the description says, do you speak the language of flags? We've got some codes to download, but let's go and take a look at the site first. So we visit the page and we have two drop downs. One is the country that we're from and we can put in a different country here. And then the other is, I wonder what people in whatever country say. And we can select a country and that will retrieve a flag as well. And there doesn't seem to be much else in terms of functionality. Let's have a look at Burp Suite, have a look at the HTTP history, and we can see there's this flag.js. There's no point in us really digging through the client side scripts as we've got the full source code for the server and stuff as well. So we can go and look at that shortly. Let's just try and get an idea what's happening when we make these requests. So there is this one. This is the country we're from, St. Kitts and Nevis. And we can see how this request looks. So we could send this to repeater and play around with it. Notice that it's set in a cookie. So you've got this set cookie ISO is being set and that's fine. Do we have anything else of interest? We can see what other requests we made. It doesn't look like it. We've got the view country as well. And this retrieves a JSON objects as a message. And then there is an ISO, which is a country code. Let's take a copy of the cookie and let's go to the decoder and paste this in here. I don't know, can we use a is it a URL decoder first for that percentage? Yep, looks like it. So we've got S colon KN dot, and then a load of what looks like maybe base 64 or some kind of encoding. Let's go and take a look at the source code. So we open up the app. We've got an app.js where we can go and have a look at those requests we were just making. There's the switch one, and it asks for a country, make sure it's valid. There's something mentioned in a country password here. And if we're not authenticated, we'll get this error message, which we didn't see so far. We've also got the view option. And again, we need to give a valid country. And there's another message saying the country has an embargo on your country, which we didn't see. So that's interesting. Do we have anything else here? Doesn't look like it. Let's take a look at the countries.yaml. And here immediately then we see what we're looking for, which is Flagistan. And there is a message and a password. And then there's all these countries denied. And we don't have that for the others. So we've got the message, which is just a translation. We don't have any denied countries if we check any of the other countries listed. And we also don't have a password for the others either. So let's go back to our app.js. The password, it was saying that the password, the cookies.password should match the country.password. And we don't know what the country.password is. It's been redacted. So 
Okay, do we have anything else to check? We've got the flag.js, and this is going to pull down the flag. Okay, let's go back to the site and play around with the functionality again. Now we've got a better understanding of the code. And of course, what I want to do here is try and select Flagistan. Let's see if we've got it on the menu. We do. So we change it to Flagistan, but it says error. We're not authenticated for Flagistan. Let's go back and let's try and view Flagistan. We try that and then we get the message saying there is an embargo on a country. So I wasted a little bit of time here when I was working on this. I kind of thought that because the password and the encryption that's on the cookie, there would be a little more to the challenge, but we've already seen that we can actually decode this. So we can try to re-encode it perhaps with the FL value and then see if we can submit it. So I'm just going to put in here FL and then let's encode it as URL. Oh no, that's given it full URL encoding. That's not what we want. Okay, let us, let me just try and take a copy of this as it is. And I'm just going to try and switch to the country, go to the repeater. Let's just see what happens. We'll try and URL encode it here. Control and U. There we go. Okay, so that's not URL encoded all characters, it only URL encoded the key characters. Now we'll click on send, but we get the message, no, we're not authenticated for Flagistan. What about the view country option? Let's take a copy of this cookie and let's do the view. And we'll view Flagistan, send us the repeater, and paste this in here. I think we've lost some of our characters there. Let me try that again. And there we go, we get back the flag. The next challenge is called LA Housing Portal. It's got a long description. I'm not going to read through it. So let's just jump into the challenge. We open the challenge and we've got this form that we can fill in. It takes a name and then it has some drop downs for some other values. Let's just try and put in some default values and we'll try and put in a value for the name. We could put in a quote and see if we get any errors back, but we don't. It comes back with the results and we've got one user has come back. Let's go over to Burp Suite anyway. Let's send that submit request to the repeater and we could have a play around with these to see if any of the other parameters do anything so what happens if we put in a single quote at the guests and we get a 500 error let's try and put another quote and we get a 200 okay okay so it looks like the quotes are affecting the outcome here so it looks like we've got an sql injection so we could start to play around with this maybe we'll test out some comments to see if we can use them and look what we get instead. We actually get back this hacker alert. Let's see what it looks like in the browser. Uh, where is it? Show response in browser. Take a copy of that. And this is the hacker alert that we see on screen. Okay, so since we've got the server side code, why don't we go and take a look at it and see why we're getting this alert. We open up the code. We've got an app.py and we can see then that it will take in some parameters from us. We already put in, I think there was five parameters, but it's basically saying if there are any more than six, it'll come back with this invalid form data. And we could test it out. Let's just open up Burp Suite again. Let's put in here and hacks equals test and click send. Oh, let's first take out the comments of broken things. And there we get a 500 error if we have that added in. Let's try and do it again and take out the hacks parameter. And that works. Okay. But what if we change the awake parameter to hack? Okay, that also causes problems. So we still need to have awake. All right. So it takes those parameters anyway, and then it's going to loop through each one of the items. And if the value is equal to NA, it's going to pop it out of the items. Otherwise, it's going to check if the key name, so if the name of the item is greater than 10, or if the value is greater than 50, or if the key has, if the key is equal to name then it will say invalid form data. So if we go back and have a look, basically that means if we increase the size of one of the values above 10, sorry, one of the keys above 10, or one of the values above 50, let's try and put in a long value here, send, we get back this invalid form data. But as long as that's not over 50, oh, maybe that's still over 50. I'm not very good at judging the number of, there we go, okay. Oh, let me undo that. I've lost one of the parameters. There we go. Okay. What else do we have here? We've got the comment things. Let's check in if any of the keys or any of the values have either of the comment syntax for the database, which is SQLite. And it's going to take those values then. It's going to use this get matching roommates with the data. And the query is selecting all from users where, and then it's basically going to insert each one of our clauses. So 
it's going to say select all users from the users table where the guests are equal to this, the neatness is equal to this, the sleep is equal to this, and awake is equal to this, etc. And then it's going to limit that. So all of our ands are going to be inserted here in the middle. And we can't use any comments at the end of it to take out the limit. We've also got a commented out segment of code, which tells us how we can get the flag. So if we go to data.sql, we'll see in here that we've got some example values. This is the, how the users table will look. And we can also look at the SQLite. So here we go, users, we've got an ID, which is a number. And then we've got all of these string columns. And then we've got the flag, which just has a flag in it. Okay, so we want to do a union based attack. And because the users table has one, two, three, four, five, six columns, we need to make this match the six columns because there's only one column in the flag table. And we also need to keep it under 50 characters. So let me open up a code and we'll do attack.sql. As an example here, let us say, what do we want to do? We want to, first of all, insert our quote to start the injection, and then we're going to say union, and then a space, which we're going to URL encode, and then select. And then we can just put in a number here. Remember, the first one is a ID, so that needs to be a number. And then we can say, okay, null, or we could put in here flag, and then null, and then null, null, null. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're saying from flag. And that is exactly 50 characters. So if we go back to burp, and what happens if we just paste this in where it says awake, and we get this 500 error. Now, what happens if we undo that, and instead put it in the sleep column, and we get this error? What happens if we put it in both columns? We get the flag. So I'm not even too sure exactly why this happened. I just noticed that this was the case whenever I solved it. So maybe we can do the same here if we just put in the same for all of the columns. Oh, we get an error, so we can't even do that. Okay. I'm not too sure what the logic is behind that, but if we have the last two columns as this union attack, it will retrieve the flag. The next challenge is called New Housing Portal, and the description says. After that old portal, we decided to make a new one that's ultra secure and not based off any real housing sites. Can you make Sammy tell you his deepest, darkest secret? And the hint is that we can send a link to the admin bot, which we'll visit as Sammy, and we can come and watch Sammy's talk if we're stuck. So we can download the code again. We've got two sites to connect to this time, one for the challenge and one for the admin bot. Since the challenge looks like it's going to be XSS related, why don't we try and put in a payload into some of these parameters? I just put in a normal username to begin with. So let's try and do, I'll do cat123. And then the name, I'm going to try and put in this payload, which is just basically going to create an image with an invalid source so that when it triggers an error, it's going to try and redirect us to. And then this is just a tunnel, which I'll have set up to a local web server. And then we want it to include the cookie as well. I'm going to put it in here as well, just because we don't know where the XSS is. And then we'll try and sign up. But actually, I need to launch this. So let me do web up, which is just a Python. Oh, let me just show this because I'm going to get people asking, how do I do it? So it's just an alias for python-m HTTP server. So it's launched a local HTTP server. And then I'm also going to do another alias, which will basically just launch that tunnel that I have set up. You can use something like ngrok here or request bin if you don't have something like this. But here we go. We'll do qtunnel and this is going to set that up. So now any traffic that goes to cat.tunnel2.dev will go to the local server. And that's it. I'll try and sign up and we'll go and see what we can do now. We've got an option to find roommates or view invitations. So I'll try and find roommates and let's try and put in our username 123 cat123. I noticed that it just popped up and it just reloaded us to my web directory, which currently has the challenge source code in it. So that did work. But if we go back here, we'll see that we don't actually have the cookie. And the reason being, let's go back. Uh, it's not going to let me get back to where I want to. But yeah, if we go and have a look at our cookie, we will actually see that it's HTTP only and it's not going to allow us to retrieve that. And now if I go and view our invitations, we should have an invitation from ourselves. Oh, we don't actually have one showing up. Okay, that's fine. Well, let's go and take a look at the source code anyway. 
So I'm over in the server.js file and let's see what is of interest. We can see we've got this user created, which is Sammy, and that is going to be the target. So whenever we send a link to the admin, this is the user that's going to visit it. And you can see that the deepest darkest secret has been set to the flag. So that's fine. Whenever you register, that's set up as well. The deepest darkest secret, although ours will be set to to do. And if we have a look through the code, we've got our login stuff, nothing particularly of interest. We've got the finder, so this is what we just used to find ourselves. And this will also create an invitation. So if an invitation is created, that will send the deepest, darkest secret. So it looks like we need to make Sammy in, send an invitation to us. And then the invitation will list the deepest, darkest secret, which will be the flag. So we did already find the XSS. It was in the name parameter, I believe, because the deepest darkest secret was reset for us so we know how we can trigger that but we can't steal the cookie we need to do the invitation if we also have a look at the finder index.js this is where our username is shown so you can see the inner html is set to the user.name which is triggering the xss okay let's open up our f12 uh, the dev tools and i'm going to go back to the find roommate we can put in a value here. Let me just see if I can put in a username from one that I did earlier, or maybe somebody else has created this. I'm sure the DB gets reset every now and then. But we've got this username cat. I'm going to send it an invite because I just want to see what happens with our post request. And here is the post request right here. So you could right click this and you can actually copy it as a fetch. And let's see what that looks like. You can copy it as curl or something as well. If you copy it as fetch, it has a lot of stuff in here that we don't really need. Basically what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to do a similar fetch request and it's going to have in the username, which is going to have the XSS in it. And we're going to create a new one with that in a minute. So let's say it is CryptoCat, but we want to take out a lot of this unnecessary stuff. And we can do that with a payload, something like this. Let me just open that up in the JS file so you can see it with some syntax highlighting and with the format looking a bit better. So yeah, we're just doing a post request to the finder endpoint and it's gonna take in the username that we want. And then we'll be able to provide a URL that loads this script to the victim. We also want to wrap that payload up so you can go to port swigger and they've got an XSS cheat sheet which will have different payloads for different browsers. I selected an onload one here so we can go to onload and then you can also select the type here as well. I set this to style and you can basically just take a copy of this and then we're going to replace the alert one with our own XSS payload. So let's do just that. I'm going to register a new user called CryptoCat and password CryptoCat and then I'm going to paste in the name field the style where the onload is set to the fetch post request we just made and the username in there is CryptoCat and the dark secret doesn't matter we'll just do sign up we'll go ahead and let's just test it out first of all I guess we'll do CryptoCat hit enter and it should let's reload it with the network tab open and yeah you can see that it's made the post request to finder so if we now go back, even though I didn't click invite, if we now go back and view invitations, we have invitations from ourselves. So that's awesome. Now we just need to see how that actually looks like. So if I search CryptoCat, then this is how the address looks, which just means I can now go and share this with the admin. So let's do just that. I've opened up the admin page. I'm just pasting in that link and I'm going to do the capture, click submit. And hopefully they're going to visit that link. It's going to load up this page, which is going to trigger that cross-site scripting, which let's have a look. Inspector, we can go in here, main, where is it? User, paragraph, this one here, name. And you can see our script is here with the style on load. So that's what's executing. And that means if we go back to the home and view our invitations, we've now got a message from Sammy. So they sent us an invitation and that included the deepest, darkest secret, which was the flag. Anyway, my teammates solved this Pong challenge and the Penguin login. The Pong was like a mini game and it used web sockets and you could mess around with the velocity of the bat and stuff. I did play around with that for a while. One of my teammates accidentally solved it. I think they left it playing for 10 minutes while they went away and came back and they had the flag. So um, I'm not too sure what that was about. The Penguin login was an SQL injection vulnerability. But this video has already got quite long and I don't want to spend a long time editing. So 
I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.